Hello everyone, my name is Manali. I'm a final year MBBS student. I'm going to present before you all a very interesting case today. So let's get started. Dr. P.K. Sayan Medical Forum has come up with this interesting competition called Dr. Sherlock, the science of deduction. A very interesting patient who has pain in his knee. Let's see what the history of patient is. Our patient is a 48 year old male who has pain in his right knee. The onset of pain is sudden and abrupt. The pain is so severe that it awakened the patient from his sleep at 2 a.m. The duration of pain is for around 8 hours and the pain is aggravated on extension of knee. Keeping the knee in flex position reduces the pain. His knee is also swollen and warm. Patient has a history of similar episode in past wherein he had pain and swelling at the base of his great toe of the left foot which resolved with ibuprofen therapy in 2-3 to three days. Patient denies any history of injury to the knee or surgery of the knee. The only significant medical history of the patient is that he is hypertensive and his blood pressure is well under control with hydrochlorothiazide therapy. Patient is a non-smoker and a social drinker. Further, on examining the patient, it was noticed that his temperature was 99.4 degree Fahrenheit, heart rate 104 beats per minute, blood pressure 136 by 78 millimeters of mercury. On systemic examination, the patient had tachycardia but his heart beat was regular. There was no murmur or gallop. His chest was also clear. On local examination, his right knee was swollen and erythematous. On palpation, it was warm and tender and patient was unable to fully extend the knee. There is no pain, swelling or deformity in any other joint, neither are there any skin rashes anywhere else on the body. Sherlock Holmes always says that you see but you don't observe. So let's try and understand what exactly different features in history are suggestive of rather than just hearing to the history. Our patient has a pain which is of short duration and very acute, so which is suggestive of an acute pathology. Patient also has swollen, warm and erythematous knee which is suggestive of an inflammatory pathology. The pain is aggravated on extension and this points towards involvement of joint rather than a soft tissue involvement. Based on this, let's see what could be our differential diagnosis. Our differential diagnosis could be acute gouty arthritis septic arthritis, calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, infective cellulitis, traumatic arthritis, reactive arthritis, psoriatic arthritis or soft tissue rheumatism. Now from all this differential diagnosis, let's try and reach a probable diagnosis. Our patient has pain which is acute and is aggravated by movement. There is also inflammation. All this is pointing towards an acute inflammatory arthritis rather than a degenerative arthritis. Further, let's see the involvement of joints. Our patient has not having multiple joint involvement and it is just a monoarticular involvement. Apart from this, there are also no extraarticular manifestations in patient. These features are ruling out reactive arthritis and psoriatic arthritis because over there, there is polyarticular involvement and also there are extraarticular manifestation. Also, cellulitis and soft tissue rheumatism is ruled out because now we know that it is involvement of the joint and not of the surrounding structures. Further, our patient has absence of high grade fever. There is no history of trauma and there is presence of similar episode in past. This is further ruling out septic arthritis and traumatic arthritis and now what is left is acute gouty arthritis or calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease. But our patient is a hypertensive who is on hydrochlorothiazide therapy. He has had a similar complaints in past with involvement of typically the first metatarsophalangeal joint. All these features are more pointing towards acute gouty arthritis rather than calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease. So first, I will tell you some key points about acute gouty arthritis. It is a metabolic disease characterized by deposition of monosodium urate crystals in the joints and soft tissues. 
Risk factor for this is high serum uric acid level. The levels could be high because of increased production or decreased excretion. Clinical features are very typical with a sudden onset of pain often early in the morning or in the night which awakens the patient. The pain is very severe often described as worst pain of the life and uh, it often progresses to swelling and uh, erythema. When we talk about management, we need to talk about both investigations and treatment. So let's start with investigations. Sherlock Holmes always says that I never guess it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. In this case also, it's similar. We cannot start with management of acute gouty arthritis without ruling out other close differential diagnosis, especially septic arthritis and calcium pyrophosphate depositional disease. For this, our major investigation is synovial fluid aspiration and analysis. The synovial fluid will be uh, cultured and examined for the presence of any uh, bacteria. This will rule out septic arthritis and also it should be analyzed well under polarizing microscopy to differentiate it from calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease. In gouty arthritis, the aspirate is often turbid, the leukocyte count is increased, one can see needle shaped crystals on microscopy and there is a negative birefringence. Another important test is serum uric acid levels. These are often elevated, but low or normal levels do not rule out acute gouty arthritis because they tend to be low in inflammation because of uricosuric action, uricosuric action of inflammation. 24 hour urinary uric acid level is also to be measured to differentiate between the cause of excess serum uric acid levels, whether it is because of decreased excretion or, ex in, uh, or excess of production. Other routine investigations like complete blood count, urine analysis, serum creatinine, erythrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein is also to be done. An X-ray is also must to rule out presence of TOFI and also for the further future reference. Now let's talk about the treatment. Let's start with treatment of an acute attack. So we can start in an acute attack with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like indomethacine, naproxene, ibuprofen, diclofenac. These bring relief in majority of the patient. Colchicine is also an another option available. It can be started at 0.6 mg 8 hourly and then tapered. It is to be stopped at first sign of low stool. Both NSAIDs and colchicine are dangerous in patients with renal disease and hence in such patients Glucocorticoids or steroids are to be preferred. You can give prednisolone intramuscularly or triamcinolone acetonide intraarticularly. Canakinumab is an interleukin 1 beta monoclonal antibody, and this is also very helpful in the treatment. Apart from this, cold packs can be done, can be given. This is the treatment of an acute attack. This will relieve the patient from an attack. Now, there is also something called as hypouricemic therapy to reduce the serum uric acid level. This is not to be given during an acute attack because it can in fact aggravate an acute attack by increasing the production. So, uh, what are the indications of hypouricemic therapy? One, it is not to be given with a single episode. It is given with recurrent attacks of acute gout when there are more than one episode occurring in a period of 12 months. Whenever there is an evidence of bone or joint damage, presence of TOFI, renal impairment or nephrolithiasis. So this were the investigations. Now what is our target of hypouricemic therapy? We have to keep the serum uric acid levels below 6 mg per dl because below above this level there is dip, uh, deposition of crystals in the joint. Now what are the drugs available? Drugs available with us are those which reduce the production of uric acid per se. So they are allopurinol and peluxostat. Both of them are xanthine oxidase inhibitor and hence they reduce the production of uric acid. In patients with renal disease, the dose of allopurinol is to be reduced because it is excreted by renal root. Peluxostat is excreted by hepatic metabolism. So its dose reduction is not required in patient with renal disease. Apart from that, there are uricosuric drugs like probenicid, they increase the excretion of uric acid. They are contraindicated in presence of renal disease. And there is another drug called peglotecase. This is especially for refractory cases. It converts uric acid to allantoin and facilitates its excretion. Patient, and this is our case. 
and at the end i would just like to say that let the base of my history taking be so strong that the pinnacle of my diagnosis won't shake thank you stay safe stay healthy